Hello. Hello, viewers. Welcome to Doncaster Methodist Circuit Daily Devotion YouTube channel. So today is Monday's devotion, and I would like to welcome you all for joining me today. It's a great day, and we thank God for giving us the opportunity to share his word again. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody in Doncaster Circuit for all the support and love that I have received throughout my journey of discernment. And I'd like to thank everybody as I am moving on to Birmingham, beginning of September. I'd like to thank Sue Pickrell, who is my mentor. I'd like to thank her very, very much for all the support she's been giving to me and all the prayers she's been praying for me. And I know other people have been praying for me as well. I thank you so much for every support you've given to me. Today's devotion, I am going to talk about what do you do when everything fails? You see, we are in a world where we are being challenged by so many things at the moment. These challenges are impacting on us and our daily life. What used to be normal is not normal anymore. We have to get used to the new normal. And it's hard, all these changes. So what do we do in all this frustration, in all this pain where some people have lost loved ones? Some people are wondering, will I ever be able to go out? Will I ever be able to have a normal life? Well, today's devotion is, what do you do when everything fails? Our Bible passage today is taken from Act 16, 25 to 26. This is the word of God. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaken. At once, all the prison door flew open and everyone's chain came loose. This is the word of God. I've chosen this very short passage, but before we understand this short passage, I'm just gonna give you a background to how Paul and Silas ended up in prison. Paul and Silas are missionaries and they were on a mission in Asia, specifically Syria. They were preaching the word of God when a young lady kept following them. And in, in today's world, we'll probably call that girl fortune teller. She was telling them, she was telling the people these men are from truly from God, they are sent by God. And she kept doing it over and over and over again. In the Bible described that the girl had the spirit of divination, which is a demon. There was a spirit in that girl which was making her say these things, but it wasn't from the right source. Because of that, she got on Paul's nerve and Paul cast out the demon out of the girl. Now, the master of the, the girl were very upset that Paul cast out the demon because they were making money from the girl because of her psychic ability, her being able to predict what is happening, her being able to see things. So because of that, they dragged Paul and Silas to the marketplace. They started to beat them, rip their clothes off, humiliate them. And finally, they threw them in jail. Now, at midnight, whilst Paul and Silas were in jail, tired, hungry, frustrated, beaten, in pain, they began to pray and they began to sing songs of hymn to God. 
Then the Bible tells us all of a sudden, the foundation of the prison was shaken and the prison gate was open and the way chains were loosened all of a sudden. That is where the secret is. The secret is in the praise. That is what I'm going to talk about. When we forget our pain, when we become selfless and actually put God first and worship God in times of our frustration, in times of our pain, in times of our need, when we put God first and when we praise God and when we glorify God, God is magnified and God manifests in our time of weakness. The Bible says that in our weakness, he is our strength. That is why, you know, God manifested in that way. Because what they did moved God so much. They were in chains. They were in prison. They were humiliated. They were, um, they, were, they were beaten. They did all sorts of things to them. And they were put in prison. And they, could, they didn't even care. They, were not, they didn't even want to complain about the condition of the prison. Or they didn't even call somebody to come and get them out of the prison. But instead, they actually chose to praise God. I wonder... What is going on in your life? So many things has changed around us. Unfortunately, it has affected everybody around the world. And sometimes it's hard for us to even think of others because we ourselves, we are going through pain. But if we will put ourselves aside, and if we will give glory to God and praise God in our time of weakness, God will manifest in an extraordinary way in our life. So that is what we have to do in times when everything fails. Sing him unto the Lord. Lift up your hands unto the Lord. Clap your hands to the Lord. Give him glory because God sees things that we don't see. God has already seen the beginning and the ending of everything. We have not seen it, but it doesn't mean God is not at work. So when we feel frustrated, when we feel sad, when we are being challenged by sickness, when we are being challenged by our finances, our health, whatever that we are facing, it is hard. But why don't you praise God? Why don't you put yourself on the side and praise God? If Paul and Silas were able to praise God in a prison where probably it smells, where probably it's dark, where probably it's very uncomfortable, if they had a song to sing, then you will also have a song to sing, to praise God for everything he has been doing. He's given us good health. We are still here. We still have people who love us. There's so many things that has gone on, but God has spared our life. God has given us good health. God has protected us. We must praise him because when we think of all the negative things that is going on in our life and when we begin to complain about everything that is not going well, we actually give glory to the devil. But when we begin to praise God and thank God for the things we've not seen, for the things we've not heard, for the things that has not even come yet, then we move God to do extraordinary in our life, in our family, in our community, and in our world. That is what we have to do when everything fails. Praise God. Worship Him. Sing a new song unto the Lord. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, we have to be glad that we are here.
We have to be glad that God has been faithful to us. We have to thank him for the little things that he has done. And it all begins with praises. Thank you very much for joining me today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We pray that you will continue to give us the strength, just as your word says. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And this is the day that the Lord has made. And Lord, you said we should rejoice and be glad in it. Father, give us a glad heart. Give us a heart of praise, a heart of thanksgiving, that we will continue to praise you, even when things do not seem the way that we want it to be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So God bless you. I pray that God will keep you. This is my last Monday devotion. I wish you all the best and I, I request that you remember me in your prayers as I move on. God bless you. Thank you.